that actually has a coach's certification that's required before you can coach the kids. If you coach your children or coach children before, your uh, requirement to coach those kids was generally just showing up. That's the number one requirement for coaching kids in, in Little League, in soccer, and everything else is that you will show up on Saturday morning and run around those kids, and maybe on Wednesday or Tuesday during the week. We make our coaches go through continuing education credits. They go through a certification uh, that is taught by a few, a few of us who have been certified by the national organization. So we really focus on having coaches who actually know what they're doing and, are, and, and know how to treat kids and how to work with kids. Uh, so fundamentals of that and also fundamentals for the kids to go through. They go through a series uh, of different aspects of, of coaching so they can actually get to their, the, know their fundamentals. Uh, a small uh, a portion of what we do is an interscholastic sport, a traditional interscholastic sport. We have kids uh, racing from teams that are related to their schools, just like they would in other, any more traditional like ball sports. Um, and then we have the adventure and experiential education. That's coming along uh, from, I want to toot our own horn, but a lot of these things, you see the cool things that we do, have come along from ideas from Pennsylvania. So the adventure, we're the first state to do the adventure thing. Adventure, what adventure is, is, is like riding where you may do with your friends. And that riding, is not racing. That riding is going out, seeing somewhere new, sessioning that rock, or you know, going up that hill over and over again, or down that hill over and over again, whatever it may be. Going out with your friends. I say, I say, well, what it is is having lunch and shooting some, pi some pictures with my friends while riding my bike, and that's really what the adventure is. And we do some team building with these guys and some ex experiential learning, uh, and just gives a, a wider view than just uh, racing. Uh, I, I talked about our coaching, kind of got sidetracked a little. That's what I do with the league. Is I, I, I work with the. Uh, I'm the director of coaching, whatever that means, but I do a lot of the coaching. Um, and the, co the coach's um, training is very, very important. Uh, looking at a lot of aspects like I talked about, you know, ba background checks, you know, we start there and then we go to um, practical skills. Like, can you, can you coach a kid? And riding a bike is not, riding a bike effectively is not the same as coaching a kid effectively, right? So there, and there's, there, we, we really work to make sure that that's, um, that part of our, part of our focus, uh, and also you know, also managing a team is incredibly important. If you can talk about, it, we'll, we'll we'll learn more about that in the future. Uh, we also have racing, right? We we do have uh, five to six races a year. Um, so in Pennsylvania, we do about twelve days that we call racing. So from July one to essentially November one, only twelve days are actually focused at racing. The rest of the time is focused at the all the other aspects of what we do. So you can find out what's important for. What we see, and, and this part, of, this part of what we see as part of our community, it's not that racing is, is good or bad or anything else. It's that this is community. When you look at that line, and you see New Jersey. You have people from all over the state. You can identify those colored jerseys from all over the state. But you see those, the, all those kids from all over the state. That's community. And what you don't see in that picture is the thousand people who are there watching this happen. Grandmas and grandpas and, and aunts and uncles and mom and dad and friends and everybody else. And cycling community folks that come out just because they've heard us talk about this forever. And we'll talk about the history in a couple of seconds. But this is like. This is community. It's not just racing. It's also part of community. Adventure. Where are you at? Are you here? <laughs> she, <laughs> she is. So it's cool to see the kids. You know, when I, when I like I, I do these presentations, like I know that kid. Uh, so adventure, like I talked about before, uh, a, a little bit of um, part of my discussion was the adventure is now, like I said, going out and just riding and having a good time and learning about riding and, and just not focus on racing. There's no timer on this stuff. It's just going out and having a good time. And we do a lot of uh, some team building stuff you folks may have done, uh, you know, at work or, or, or in other community groups you're involved in. Uh, we do a lot of that stuff out in the woods, like, you know, the, um, the human knot and all kinds of fun, fun activities that we do with the kids. So adventure is just really just having a good time out on your bike. Um, team Trail Corps. I, I, I and, and many of us hold, hold this very, very close to us, is that we need to build trails so we can ride trails. There have been many times in my history of mountain biking, which now gets to be longer than I want to, want to admit, um, that we've been worried about getting banned from a location. And the reason why we're getting banned is because there are user groups who did not like mountain biking in the woods. So what do we do? We band together and we build trails. And we, and we police the park. The Wissaken Park, which is you know, world famous Wissaken, mountain biking was supposed to be banned there in 1996. It was going to be banned and they actually brought an independent group to do an investigation to see if they should ban mountain biking. And what the group found was that mountain bikers were policing the trails and were telling them about trouble spots and also preventing crime throughout the park. Mountain biking was allowed forever. So that's, 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 that's how that happens, right? So when we see what we do 
and we see how, and how important it is. But also we need places to practice, we need places to ride, we need places to enjoy. So we put a lot of time into, into building trails. So we brought this to the kids and said the kids should be building trails as well. And they should know how hard it is to get, to get access, right? get access to a place, put the people together to do the work, do the actual work, and then maintain the actual work, and then get on the next step of going on the next step. So going on to the next piece of trail that we can build. So part of Teen Trail Corps is that we work to build all those aspects, those four aspects of that. We have Teen Trail Corps people in here? Yes, so we have, a we have two? Awesome. Captain. Yeah, two captains, so awesome, awesome work. So they put in, what well, to get captainship, what they have to do is do a bunch of hours of work. How many hours of work? You know, I do a bunch, and I tell my coach, and I get a captainship. Uh, a bunch of hours of work. Um, they need to do some, some advocacy, advocacy where they, they actually talk to community members and stakeholders involved in mountain biking. They lead development of, of actually building trails, putting, putting a hoe ho to the dirt and actually making trails. It's really cool. It's really cool that what they're doing. It's, it's fantastic. So thanks guys for doing that. And they, the trails those two young people are, are riding are the trails that all of us get to ride. How cool is that? And around the state, uh, Pennsylvania has put in thousands of hours every single year and will continue to do so. Uh, this year, I think we tallied it up recently. Uh, it's over 4,000 hours, over 4,000 hours just of, of work that kids are doing in the, in the woods. Crazy. Uh, grit, so girls riding together uh, is, is our, our, our focus that we, yeah, there we go. She'll talk about that plenty later. Um, and, and, and grit has been, uh, NICA is focused at uh, developing more ridership uh, from, from young women in our sport. Uh, so that, that is, uh, People of color and also women have been ignored in this sport for a long time. So this is a way that we could focus to get more girls riding together. And also research, millions and millions and millions of, of volumes of research shows uh, how much generally young women will perform when they're with other young women and not with boys involved. Okay, So it's not just boys fun, it's girls fun too. And we, do, we have a lot of fun with this. And we do grit rides on the weekends as part of our adventure and part of our community building. Um, so you can see up here, lots of data. Uh, there's about 22,000 students racing across the country. Uh, in There's 8,000 middle school kids, almost 9,000 middle school kids in 31 different leagues. 31 leagues in 30 states. The math works out because there's a NorCal and a SoCal. <laughs> Just so you're wondering if it says, because sometimes it has the states numbered up there. But uh, we have 1,000 teams, 11,000 volunteers, 11,000 coaches. Um, Female student athletes, 4,000. We're trying to get that to almost 30% of all of all our students over the next couple of years. The Mid Atlantic, with uh, PA, New Jersey, and Maryland. Uh, like I said, our, our three sister leagues. We have over, over almost 2,000 students. We'll, we will we will hit 2,000 next year. There's no question. Um, middle school aged kids. We're, we're focusing on 1,000. We got three local leagues, um, and we. I mean, we, if you race in the in the region, we have the Mid Atlantic Super Series. The Mid Atlantic Super Series reaches Maryland, reaches New Jersey, reaches into Pennsylvania, and that's really why it just makes sense that we're so close. Um, 94 teams, I think that number is higher, that, thir that 1,300 volunteer number, that's, that's even higher than that, uh, I believe, from doing that in the past. 900 coaches, we have 400 coaches just in Pennsylvania. So and that number just keeps going up and up and up, uh, going through that. And 300 some student, uh, student athletes, or female student athletes. So growing that number, trying to grow that number, and also growing the number up top and also keeping that 30% that ratio uh, knowing what we have. So before we get to Sam, um, a little bit about, so just so you know, a little bit about Pennsylvania. In 2009, so uh, our lead director is a guy named Mike Kuhn. Mike Kuhn puts on a bunch of different events, Transylvania Epic, a whole bunch of mountain biking events. Uh, in two, and he's been doing it for a long, long time. If you've heard of like gravel riding, Mike basically, I don't wanna say he invented it, uh, but in Pennsylvania he made it big uh, with um, Iron Cross and a few other things. So anyway, Mike's our, our lead director. In 2009, Mike invited local, uh, he lives in Harrisburg, invited local Harrisburg high school teams to start racing at his events and racing as a team versus racing as juniors. So that was in 2009. Um, from 2009 to about 2014, uh, a few of us around the state worked on our individual trying to build this league. We've heard about this league, we've heard what's going on, and we worked at, our, at building that individually. In March of 2014, uh, Gary Soklist, a Mountain Bike Hall of Fame member, look him up, uh, and he works for QEP, invited us to Lancaster High School to show Single Track High, which is a great documentary about what was going on in Northern California at the time. And at that meeting were basically the people who go on to become uh, our first crew that developed this. Mike, Mike Kuhn, myself, uh, Clay Childs, and also Stan's No Tubes, where they had like their, almost all their employees there. 
uh, checking out those things. So if you see stands downstairs, give them a high five. They've been with us since day one, uh, literally day one. And then from that meeting, we had a couple other folks who we knew we wanted to be there, and we all that's how it kind of started. Uh, we, along with New Jersey, got our bid in uh, 2016 uh, in, at, at Interbike. Um, and we were we were announced to the and we were officially a league at that point and then all the things that come out being officially a league and then from then on we're now into this year will be our we're coming up upon our fifth leadership summit and we're going we're getting ready for our fifth season we just completed our fourth season so quite a bit of work has been done over the last couple of years so if you have any questions let me know and I, I, I've literally been there since day zero so I can I can help you with as many questions as possible along the way um, so I'm going to introduce Someone close to Danielle, there we go. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, as you heard, my name is Danielle. Um, <laughs> my name is Danielle Wachowski. I am one of the head coaches for the Somont um, New Cycling League. And um, Pat and John kind of gave you the big picture about NICA. Um, but we're going to get to the meat of NICA, which is really the kids, right? All right, this is Sam. Sam, we met on a baseball field um, three years ago, I think. And Sam was your classic newbie cyclist, right? Not so great on his bike, never had ridden trails. Um, but, you know, he came to us and we were like, all right, well, what are we going to do with Sam? Luckily, the coaching structure and program that NICA provides for us, we were able to take Sam through the MTB 101, get him more comfortable on his bike, um, and actually, in a few short months, get him able to compete and actually finish his first mountain bike race ever. Um, this is always what he looks like when he's riding. He's psyched to be on 